This is the Optimal Wellness Podcast, helping you achieve optimal wellness naturally with your host, Dr. Clifford Fetters of Health and Wellness of Carmel. Hello, and welcome back to the Optimal Wellness Podcast. I'm Cassidy Waters, as always, with Dr. Fetters. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's really, really important to us here at our practice, and that's cancer prevention and detection. We'll just jump right into it, as we always do. Let's kind of review what is cancer, the definition of cancer, and what are the causes and risk factors. Sure, sure. So cancer is just the abnormal growth of tissue. Uh, there's even at a cellular level. Okay. So just abnormal growth of cells that are growing faster, uncontrolled growth. Okay. It can be in any organ, any organ. Yeah. Any tissues. Yeah, and there's, you know, thousands of types of cancers you hear about. So, yeah, so, so the body has a way to just keep everything under control. And this, when the cell growth gets out of control, then that's, that's cancer. Okay, and risk factors, causes. Right, uh, not doing the lifestyle that the holistic doctor <laughs> yeah. tells you to do. I mean, it, people don't realize only 10% of cancer is related to your genetics. 90% of cancer is related to the environment. Oh, wow. So I have people concerned because there's a family history of cancer. It's like, well, still, the odds are, you know, we've had pollution for over 100 years. Yeah. So it is the environment. Yeah. So your environment is everything. Okay. So, and yeah, you hear, I mean, the internet and social media goes crazy of like, oh, you can't use, you know, plastic wear. It's going to cause cancer. You can't. And so I've, I've seen some things that are like the only things that are scientifically proven to cause cancer are processed meats. Mm-hmm. And alcohol, or right? It's just is I that totally it? Dis- yeah, totally I was disagree. gonna say I'm like, totally there's disagree. a lot more than that. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, Elmer Craner was the scientist behind uh, heavy metals and the damage it does. And 40 years ago, he said that probably he felt that the majority of cancers in America is due to heavy metals. Okay. As you know, heavy metals block the methylation cycle, which stops pretty much all the important chemical reactions in the body. So heavy metals is huge. And then our environment, there's the beautiful thing is there's an environmental tox screens by multiple companies, just a simple urine test. And we can see how much plastic byproducts, you know, from gasoline, uh, unfortunately, pesticides and herbicides, those live in the Midwest and farming communities, those are major carcinogens, yeah. which is undeniable. Yeah. So so that's the big thing. You're um, So that's why organic food is so important. Yeah. If, if you're eating pesticides every day, if you all think, would think, well, cows, you know, they don't spray pesticides on cows. But what does the cows eat? Genetically modified foods laced with herbicides and pesticides. Yeah. So that's why organic grass-fed meat is so important. Yeah. And so as far as organic, I know, I, I feel like I've heard, and a lot of people have heard that the term organic has become pretty, like, I know, lazy. I so know that, what exactly, like, what should you look for if you're going right. to the grocery So our government is not our friend. The rules for organic is so lax now, and yeah. they, there's so many hacks away. You just have to find sources. Yeah. Sources that, that actually care more about you than profit, and uh, there's many ways to figure that out. Yeah. And organic meaning they're just not sprayed with anything. Right, preferably okay. right. And, and the, what the animal eats is important. Yeah. You know, it's a, is the cow eating healthy food or unhealthy food? Yeah, okay, that's good to know. Because I think, again, organic is so, people don't really know what that means anymore because right, it is right. so such a lazy term these days. Um, so that we talked a little bit about testing. So that gets into the next topic of when it comes to cancer prevention and detection, what is the difference between the holistic approach and the traditional approach? Sure. Sure. Well, probably the most exciting news we've had in the last 40 years is the Onco Declare. Okay. It was just d- d- um, released three months ago. Okay. So if I, there is a test, a simple blood test, checking for just abnormal DNA and RNA that we know comes from cancer cells, I mean, f- that's 94% sensitive, 94% specific oh, for wow. cancer. Oh, wow. And that was just released. And there's other companies that have been trying and have failed. But this is for all cancers, 94% accurate. Oh, wow. So if you so if you take the test, it's just straight up will tell you you have cancer or not. Right, right. Or, nothing okay. more. Nothing more. This is new. The, the company that uses the RGCC, the Research Cancer Center in Greece, which we've been affiliated with for yeah. almost two decades. I mean, they have supercomputers and they're analyzing. So every person has a test. If your test is positive, then you check for circulating tumor cells called the Oncotrace. Okay. So as long as if that Oncotrace is negative, so you do not have circulating tumor cells, that means you if you have a tumor, it's less than 0.2 millimeters, Okay. which is tiny. 
which yeah. you know, the average scan takes you know five millimeters to show up on a scan. Yeah. And we're talking about 0.2 milligrams, and but even smaller than that. So if you have a onco declare positive, I mean, it could be you know it's not even uh, available to, to determine in any other way. Yeah, you, know, you just have abnormal cells in your body that shouldn't be there that has unrestrained growth. Could it take five, ten years before it becomes a problem? We don't know. Yeah. So what? Right now it's early, but what we do know is work on the lifestyle. Yeah. What are motivating factors? Okay, you you don't have cancer because you don't have circling tumor cells, but mm-hmm. something's cooking. So it means your body physiology is out of balance. Yeah, and it's just a motivating factor to do right. what your doctor tells you to do. Yeah, well, and that's such a big thing too because I think, and you know this more than I, you know, people who have cancer always talk about, gosh, if I would have known sooner, I would have done this. And I think, you know, the the average person thinks it's so obvious that like, oh, it's so obvious that I have cancer. I'm so tired. I have a headache all the time, you know, and then I went and I had it. And I don't think, you know, I had no idea that I had a tumor and it was seven centimeters. I have no idea how long it was growing in my body. And I only knew because my, I had appendicitis. So well, yeah, lucky you never you. know until, well, you know, I, I got lucky in that situation, but I think that's the biggest misconception is that there's all these obvious signs, right. but you could have it growing oh, in your body yeah, for un- a long time. Unfortunately, by the many times we see stage three and four cancer and there's no symptoms at all. Yeah. Suddenly, why did I just lose 30 pounds? You know, why have I, everyone has a tummy ache. Yeah. Everyone has, has a, a cough once in a while. I, had, I know. So really th- that test is a game changer. Yeah. So as far as traditional medicine, what does that look like? So, you know, when people come in and they have these, you're probably going to offer the test. As right. far as traditional, what does that look like for right. them? It's mostly evaluating the symptoms. You okay. know, do every time people come in for a physical, you sign, you know, are you having any of the symptoms of cancer? Sure. So when we ask about your abdominal pains and headaches and change in bowel habits and change in menstrual cycle uh, and just fatigue, weight loss. I mean, every time you see a physical at any age, we, we ask those questions, yeah. traditional or holistic. Okay. And as far as what treatment looks like. I know a lot of people just talk about in the traditional sense, it's mostly just chemo and radiation. Right. Um, and I know we work a lot in conjunction with that. So what does that look like on our end? Sure, sure. Probably a big point is 20% of everyone in America diagnosed with cancer will never see an oncologist, yeah. never. Wow. And unfortunately I see people have had cancer for five years, 10 years, never seen a doctor and it's extremely large and almost impossible to resolve. So I want to know that oncologists have come a long way in the last 20 years. There's targeted therapies that work amazingly well. Insurance covers it. So no matter what the stage, everyone should see an oncologist. Yeah. And if you, and you, and you know, as you know, India is the best state in the country to produce, to provide holistic cancer care. Yeah. You know, we have in our constitution, we can produce, we can provide holistic health care. Uh, with regardless of FDA approval for mm-hmm. any of our patients at any stage. Yeah. And it's one of the few states in the country. So yeah. as long as you're a resident of Indiana, you're allowed to do that without yeah. hindrance. And therefore, the whole, many of the oncologists are willingly work with us together so we can do our part, they do their part. If it's stage three or four, which is expensive to treat and there's not an unlimited budget, have the oncologist put you in complete remission and then we'll help re- you come to see me, you know, preferably before you're finished with the treatment mm-hmm. so we can have a plan. And so we rebuild your body from the damage from whatever treatment they did. And then we do all the things that can keep it from coming back. Okay. And you talked a little bit about um, diet. So is there any other things with your diet that you should, besides organic, that you can start today to help with that prevention? Yeah, my main thing is avoiding processed foods. Yeah. You know, avoiding the toxins that cause cancer. You know, pesticides and herbicides cause cancer, and there's no doubt about it. You know, there's a big debate. Do we do keto? Do we do vegan? And it's really based upon your metabolic type, which we spoke about before. How do you feel? And, um, and how does your blood look? Some people have high cholesterol when they're on the keto diet in, in the wrong way, and that's an issue. And some people feel terrible and have low protein when they're on the vegan diet. Mm-hmm. So really working with a nutritionist or a holistic provider helps. But how you feel as long as you eat clean is the most important thing. Yeah. And what is that blood? I have so many people from that episode ask me, okay, what is that blood test that I take to know what kind of food I should be eating? Uh, uh, well, Number one, just a lipid profile. Okay. If your triglycerides are above 100, you're eating too many carbohydrates. Okay. You have some women that can just live on sugar and they're, yeah. they're, and then the hemoglobin A1C, what's your average blood sugar? 
I went 5.0 and they live on sugar. And I'm, you know, you want to be 5.5 or less. If you're above 5.5, you're they're definitely too much carbohydrates. Yeah. But if you're vegan doing sugar and your your triglycerides are excellent and your A1C is low, then again, make sure you're, it's clean and everything else. But those are the two biggies. Yeah. You know, the other inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein and fiber engine. You know, yeah. you want your CRP and fiber engine to be super low because inflammation is a cause of cancer. So that's a big thing. So other than the metals environment, if you have inflammation, that's a cause of heart disease, pretty much all chronic degenerative diseases uh, are influenced by inflammation. Yeah, from some sort of inflammation, yeah. Um, so as far as diet, obviously exercise is probably super important in that whole it's preventing cancer. Yeah, as far as anti-aging, it's been yeah. proven just recently. There was a huge study. Those who exercise live longer, period. Yeah. More important than diet. Yeah. You know, as, as we get older, exercise is even more and more important. Yeah, and lifting. I know lifting weights and increasing your muscle tissue is something that my oncologist, which was great, he is a traditional doctor, brought up to me. He's like, you know, it's great that you lift weights because that will help you live longer and right. help your body process things better. And so I think that's something that women especially are really scared to do, yeah. but it's changed my life and upping your protein intake can, you know, really help you feel a lot better in any sense. Um, so and on top of diet and exercise, obviously in the holistic community, we love our supplements. Yes. Yes. What sort of supplements should you be taking to just help you be healthier? Yeah. I'm, you know, we were Lyme experts before we started working with cancer and the immune pack that we used to give just for people with Lyme, I just give everyone our immune systems being intact in so many different directions. So our basic immune pack is ImmuPro or any good high quality multivitamin that also has like green tea extract and okay. alpha lipoic acid, other nutrients that just really boost your immune system. Obviously probiotics, probiotics help, help your immunity. And vitamin D, probably most important is vitamin D. Yeah. As you know, you want the K2 to keep the calcium in the, in the bones rather than in the heart. And uh, vitamin C. We give usually 3,000 milligrams twice daily just to really get a, a surge of vitamin C to help keep the body healthy. Okay, so diet, exer exercise, supplementation. Outside of those, what lifestyle choices can you make to help with that cancer prevention? Probably more important than anything, sleep and stress. Whenever someone has a chronic degenerative disease, usually there's something happened the previous year, whether it's cancer or arthritis. So when you are stressed, as you know, Cortisol goes up, there goes the sugar, and when the sugar levels go up, that causes inflammation, feeds the germs, feeds cancer. So stress management is critical. And then sleep, sleep deprivation, same thing. You're living on adrenaline, which means high cortisol, high blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So managing stress is, is the most important thing you yeah. can do to more than probably even the diet. Yeah, and letting your emotions out, I think is such a huge thing that people like, especially men are scared to do. And it's like, I just put my dog down not long ago and I had him for eight years and like, I would like hold back crying. And I'm like, no, this is my body right, telling right. me this is needs to get out. Right. And those are the kind of things that people I don't think think about that that can cause so many issues with your body. Okay, so the simplest breakdown of what exactly are heavy metals. Yes. Well, the biggest one, lead and mercury, the biggest ones are environment. Okay. So heavy metals, heavy by definition means irreversibly binds to the enzyme systems in the body and they don't, they're not eliminated, period. So you have to do, be, do something active to eliminate these metals. So the problem is we talk about the methylation cycle, the methylation cycle, the wheels of methylation, how you heal your body, how you uh, improve your immune system, how you detoxify is based on many different chemical reactions. And the heavy metals block the enzymes that run these these uh, systems. So when they're blocked, nothing works well. Yeah. So that's one, if you can take all the vitamins of the world, if you have heavy metals blocking the enzymes, the enzymes are not going to work. Yeah. And what, so we've talked about this before. I know you've said there's like certain cookware you can use. There's foods, there's makeup, like all right, these things. Right. So what would be like the most common things that people are using that are really high yeah, uh, metals. Uh, first, yeah, the water supply is a concern. So I mean, I, I think everyone should have some type of high quality filter, such as reverse osmosis. With the food, we already talked about that. But still, there is going to be uh, metals in the food and the water that we drink. Uh, so therefore, it's important to do some form of chelation. Yeah. And there's a, just simple uh, vitamins, uh, chelating pills specifically. So if you're going to eat fish, which is full of metals usually, then you just take a killing pill before the fish and really minimize the fish intake. Yeah. Because, you know, the 
mercury is in most fish and lead is in shellfish. So I know it's bad news for my seafood people. I see it all the time. The most commonly reason why someone comes in with uh, mercury poisoning is they've just been eating fish for the last three years. Yeah. So that's just, I mean, Mark Hyman, one of the most famous doctors that does, I mean, he was living on fish and he couldn't function and that's why he, he couldn't function. He found out he's heavy metals and that's why he went this direction. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, a, it's in the diet, it's in the air. You know, fortunately we started sc um, screening all of the uh, smokestacks in, in America. We actually use a filter system. So, uh, so the problem with coal is converted to mercury. And so India was one of the worst states in the nation for having high mercury levels. And there's a direct correlation to all the mercury and all the ADD in India. So oh, a wow. very high correlation. Because it's just terrible for your brain. You can't make neurochemicals. So, um, so, but now at scrub, so it's still in our environment. So, oh, and infrared sauna. Infrared sauna pour, yeah. helps you pour out heavy metals. That plus the chelating pills and maybe IV chelation if it's severe. Yeah. And you can, does that, is the infrared, is that the same thing as getting like a red light? Right, right, two totally think, different things. Right, okay. so infrared, and people say, oh, Dr. Ferris, I sweat all the time. It's like, no, it's yeah. nothing. Well, sweating is a very small part of it. The, yeah. red, the infrared gives your cells extra energy to get rid of the toxins. Okay. But yeah, so I mean, the high, new high quality infrared size, the one that we love, the Therasage has, um, while you're sitting there, you might as well get red light therapy, which yeah. stimulates your mitochondria and have more energy, yeah. plus the full spectrum infrared. Yeah. So yeah, when you do that, that um, helps your body in many ways. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, for cancer prevention, I mean, healthy lifestyle, eat healthy, exercise. I said, Uncle Declare is probably, you know, a game changer. Um, our goal is no one ever diagnosed with anything more than stage one cancer. Yeah. And stage one cancer, if you can uh, follow the doctor's advice, I mean, it should never progress. Yeah. There's so many tests, so many ways to evaluate uh, cancer today. Yeah. And managing stress. I think the other thing is people freak themselves out. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to give myself cancer and you shouldn't be yeah, right, freaking you, out either. Like right, live a stress-free life if you can. It's true. I, I really believe you You will into your life what you think. Yeah. So if you think you're awesome and you're never going to, I mean, I think I'm 30 years old until I look in the mirror. And it's like, who, I seriously, it's like, who is that guy? Or if I see pictures of me, it's like, who is that guy? Because in my mind, I'm 30 years old. Yeah. So I do things that 30-year-olds do. And therefore, I just think that really helps. Yeah. And the people, I mean, the and it, uh, it's sad, but sometimes, and no offense, but it's usually my women with breast cancer and they're worried about everything. Go, what are you going to do to me today? Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, there's no reason for you to spend any money to see our treatment because if you are living in fear, yes. you're in the sympathetic overdrive, which is you can't heal. Yeah. Well, you know, and then the other people, okay, doc, what do I need to do? I'm, I'm ready to go. I know this is going to be the best thing for me. It's going to make me behave. And, and these people, it's like, that it's so easy for them. Yeah. They, they, they respond so well to treatment. So it is mental attitude and, and yeah. anyone can change that, you know, and we have Dr. Weber, but many people are help people with stress. Yeah. Management. And you just need to learn. And there's many books, podcasts. I mean, sure. uh, on YouTube, yeah. there's a hundred things, how to reduce stress, but you know, just find out what works for you. Yeah. And take good care of yourself, exercise, sleep, all the things that we've talked about in every episode and don't stress yourself out and just yeah. take care of yourself. And I think that's the biggest message. So thank you guys so much for listening today and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Optimal Wellness Podcast. Subscribe now to get monthly episodes to help you achieve your wellness goals. And if you'd like to learn how we can help, schedule an appointment at Health and Wellness of Carmel today. Just go to hwofc.com or call 317-663-7123.